ominous noise. Hail the Lord of the Night. Hey, hey, it's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Fourth Monsters vlog of the for the Warhammer 40,000 gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. Uh, it's time for another review, but this time it will not be a book for a change. It will actually be about uh, audio drama, and what audio drama I will begin with is the Night Lords. Uh, it's called Throne of Lies and it's written by Aram Damsky Bowden and it's read by John Banks and Beth, Beth Chalmers. Uh, let's see what it's about. Uh, Night Lords. Betrayed, cast from the Emperor's light and hunted as heretics, they are the rebels of the 41st millennium. Garbed in symbols of death, the Night Lords are uh, remorseless hunters and killers. They will never repent for the blasphemies that saw them banished. They prey upon the dying Imperium and bring death from the darkness between worlds. And terror is their most powerful weapon. Then we have the actual story here, Throne of Lies. The warband of the Exalted, traveling aboard the Covenant of Blood, are recovering from the events at the Cryph Primus. But the Dark Crusade against the loyal Imperial forces continue and they, they will leave a trail of blood and terror behind them. Yeah, so this is an audio drama, and it's the first time I will talk about this. Uh, so I, will, uh, I should mention this, I think. Uh, this isn't the first audio drama that I will listen to. This is actually my fourth one, actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, it, this is a midquel story. It takes place between the story, uh, the novel Soul Hunter, and the other novel called Blood Reavers, and they're also written by Ermdenski Baudem. Uh, but uh, but you don't have to read e either of those to to uh, to enjoy this story. Uh, uh, this is as much as an, as an expansion to the Night Lord uh, saga as it is on standalone. So it could work as either way. If you have read the other stories, it's an expansion to the characters. But if you never re read them, you can still listen to this as a standalone story, which is very fantastic, uh, fanta fantastically done by the author. Uh, what's uh, What's really hard about these audio dramas uh, is that two things could, can go wrong with them. First you have the writing, which uh, if you have a bad offer you will have a bad story. Then we have the second problem which only... Oh wait, um, the, first pro I mean, the first problem also occur occurs in novels as you have... Yeah, you can have both a bad audio drama and a bad novel, uh, badly written. But the problem with the audio dramas, which is the second problem, is that uh, you could have a bad reader. Uh, uh, we could have a terrible, uh, terrible voice actor who is both reading and acting out the voices, and that could ruin an entire story. Uh, many people have complained about the Butcher Snails story, where uh, Angron sounds like an angry pirate. And I, I will return to that in another review about that actual story. The warrior drew a golden blade. Its craftsmanship was exquisite. Forged in an age of inspiration long forgotten by the Imperium. On a ship of ancient relics, this was by far the most revered. Uh... But uh, I would not say that that's any problem in, th in this one. Uh, first off, yeah, Aaron Deskabarno has done a fantastic writing. He really captures the listener with his prose. I think that's pronounced r correctly at least. Uh, and it's, it's a mix mixed tragic uh, with, with suspense. Uh, and he often cuts the scene when it gets the most exciting. So like, you're, you're left with wanting more. Uh, we follow the same characters uh, from the sto sorry, um, the story Soul Hunter, uh, but we only get some l very low in depth on uh, First Claw. 
uh, with the exception of Talos, he's, as he is the main character of these stories. Uh, I would think that his slaves, called Octavia and Septimus, have the biggest screen time in this story. Uh, and it's fantastically pre performed by the, uh, by the voice actors John, uh, John Banks and Beth Chalmers. And you, you can really feel the emotion flowing through uh, how he's reading it up. Uh, I'm gonna take a sh uh, I'm gonna take a short break and show you here an um, uh, extract from the story, uh, so you can see what I'm meaning. Any word from the surface? Nothing yet. As soon as they vox confirmation, I'll bring them back on board. It's close to noon in the capital city. The High Priest will be speaking soon. Won't be long now. I don't suppose you know what they're actually doing down there? What they always do. They're hunting. Uh, as you can see, it's very touching this, uh, as he's reading up, uh, reading uh, about, uh, yeah, you feel the history, how it's going downhill with this war ban and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, this story also focuses highly on the effects as well, as, as it, this is not only an uh, uh, audiobook which, where you only read directly from, from the novel. This is an audio drama, so they have sound effects as well. Uh, for instance, we get to hear, hear how a servitor replies in a monotone, dead voice. We have the Exalted, the leader of the warband, how his inhuman demonic voice really cuts through the entire ship and it leaves a shivering feeling on the inside of you. Uh, let's listen to a short extract about that as well so you know what I mean. Very well. All stations, brace for re-entry to the void. And Octavia. Yes, my lord. You would do well to show me more respect when Talos is not a boy. We also get to feel the haunting voices of, uh, of the Night Lords as they speak, speak through their helmets, uh, which is, uh, sounds rather mechanic uh, as well, and that's very believable as they're supposed to sound like that. Uh, it's also awesome to hear how Talos' voice changes as he removes his helmet. He still sounds inhuman, but he doesn't sound mechanical anymore. Uh, this audio drama, it's, uh, it's, it runs for 72 minutes, uh, and it's worth every penny of it. Uh, but what is really, really funny, though, is that... Uh, I've listened. I've listened to this story so many times. I can remember the lines almost. Uh, yeah, I can remember them by hand. And uh, yeah, by memory, I would just say so. Uh, and when I'm li uh, reading other books by Aram uh, Dansky Bowden, uh, when a familiar sentence sometimes reappear in that story, immediately John Banks appear in my head and he's speaking. Uh, uh, I, th I think the most prominent one is, and Talos said nothing or something like that. It's it's kind of funny to see how 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 big of an impact John Banks has with his voice as he's reading. Uh, the downside of this, though, is that I've noticed slightly reused sentences, sentences and things which do reappear a bit too often in Aram Damsky Bowden's books. I doesn't. I don't say they're bad. It's uh, it could, in the in the long length, turn into a slight annoyance if you know what I mean. Uh, but I won't bring that up right here. Uh, uh, yeah. And what I also like about this story is that it's slightly unique. Uh, the biggest issue with audio dramas is that they are they have the basic same layout on, on the story which is that our main character arrives on a planet or a place where he meets some people who appears to be innocent. Then some bad guys show up and they have to battle them. Then through some detective work and some mystery solving we find out that the 
innocent people are actually the bad guys and the bad guys are actually the good guys who is in uh, yeah they're in the bad situation here they're under attack or something and in the end every bad guy dies that's the pretty much basic uh, layout for audio dramas uh, uh, Two out of three Garo stories are built like that. Uh, Red, uh, Red and Black is built like that. Uh, Walking Dead, I think it's called, by Steve Lyons is also like that. So it's, 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 uh, I think that's one of the downsides about other dramas. They tend to be very much alike. You only change the characters' names, what they are, and the place they're being at. Uh, so that's what I would say is really good about this story. It's uh, very unique in its uh, story. Uh, it's an overall good story. It's both an expansion and a standalone. It's fantastically written and read by the uh, voice actors. It's uh, well recommended. Uh, this story will get a solid uh, 8 out of 10 forks uh, when it comes to audio dramas. So. Yeah, thank you guys for, uh, very much for watching this. Uh, don't uh, forget to rate and subscribe my videos. Leave a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment, leave a comment. Uh, both positive if you, there's something you think I should change. Or leave a negative comment if there's something... No, I mean, leave a positive comment uh, on things you think that I'm doing good. Shall we keep on doing them? And leave a negative comment uh, if you, there's something you think I should change in my videos. Uh, I did get a comment on uh, a Swedish a Swedish person uh, a couple of weeks ago who said that uh, the music is, is too loud so you can't hear what, what I'm saying. So I will try to keep that in mind when I'm editing my videos in the future. Hopefully, and, and also I will try and speak louder as I have a problem with speaking thoroughly and with force or whatever. Also, I would uh, complain about this mic I have here. It's not the actual best one out there. I'm, I'm going to go out in the market and try and get a better mic. But this has to do for the time being. Uh, but yeah, so thank you very much for watching this. Uh, Ave Dominus Nox. Hail the Lord of the Night. Uh, additional, I forgot to mention this in uh, my first recording. Uh, the cover for Throne of Lies is a very awesome done work. Uh, it does show a very cool raptor leaping on onto its prey. I would think it's Lacurifus, but I could be wrong. It's definitely uh, top notch. It's a 10 out of 10. I, can't, I couldn't say it's a better work actually.